Hello, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the treatment and management of sickle cell disease. And this is my second video. In the first video of, on, on treatment and management, I talked about um, the how to cure sickle cell disease. And there's really only one way, and that's through the uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Um, and for more details of that, you can watch that video. And then the next um, aspect of treatment and management of sickle cell disease um, really involves the process of preventing venoocclusive crises. And there's, again, just to review, there's two ways to do that. Um, and they both involve decreasing the concentration of either hemoglobin S, which is the sickling form of hemoglobin, um, through a medication got called hydroxyurea, or by decreasing the concentration of of defective red blood cells through transfusion. Okay, so in this video I want to talk about um, other aspects of managing sickle cell disease. And uh, the next very important aspect of management is preventing infection. Now remember in my initial video on sickle cell disease, um, I talked about how infection is the number one cause of mortality. And so preventing infection and um, you, specific standards of prevention of infection have really decreased the mortality significantly over the past couple of decades. Um, it used to be very typical for uh, the average lifespan of someone with sickle cell disease used to be under 15 years of age and now people are living into uh, mid-adulthood into their 40s and 50s. Um, and, and largely, uh, you know, significantly this has to do with both hydroxyurea and prevention of infection. So prevention of infection really is, is critical. Um, there's two aspects of this you need to consider. One is the use of prophylactic penicillin in children under five years of age. So they actually receive uh, penicillin on a daily basis to prevent, um, to prevent uh, sepsis and bacteremia. The other aspect of preventing infection that's really critical is vaccinations, particularly pneumococcal vaccinations as well as other vaccinations like, uh, like annual flu vaccines. So it's very important to consider that if you have a, um, uh, a sickle cell patient to make sure that their vaccinations are up to date. Now the ex next aspect of management I would like to talk about is the treatment of anemia. So patients with sickle cell disease tend to become anemic because of destruction of, of aberrant erythrocytes. So this does not have to do with um, decreased iron, so we're not going to give them iron replacement. In fact, a lot of patients, because they receive um, a lot of transfusions, may actually have iron overload. So we don't want to give them iron. What we do want to do is make sure that they have plenty of folic acid because um, pa when um, because patients are anemic with sickle cell disease because of hemolysis, so they have to be constantly making new red blood cells, and uh, the creation of new red blood blood cells requires um, plenty of folic acid. So they need to have folate supplementation. And so that's sort of the main way to to treat anemia. Um, unless it becomes profound enough and they need transfusions. Okay, the next important area of managing patients with sickle cell disease is stroke prevention. And this is both primary and secondary. Secondary meaning if they've had a stroke in, in the past. Primary meaning that if uh, they need stroke prevention uh, strategies implemented if they have transcranial Doppler abnormalities. So if they've had a stroke in the past, so if they have a stroke history, or if they have transcranial Doppler anomalies. So what does this mean? It means that they need to have regular uh, transcranial Dopplers to check for these anomalies. If they have either of these factors, then they're going to need two management strategies. First, they need antiplatelet agents, aspirin and or an agent like Plavix, And the other thing that they need is they need to receive transfusions every six to eight weeks. 
And again, why does this help to prevent strokes? Well, it helps to prevent strokes by preventing venoocclusive crises. And it does this by decreasing the concentration of aberrant, aberrant erythrocytes by, um, by adding in healthy donor cells into the mix. Now, the final element of effectively managing sickle cell disease that I want to discuss here is that it's really critical to control pain. And there's two principles that we need to keep in mind when we're talking about controlling pain. The first is that we have to effectively, quickly and effectively, treat acute pain. And this is critical because if we don't do a good job of quickly and effectively treating acute pain, then we end up with chronic pain syndromes, or we increase the likelihood of, chronic, of developing chronic pain syndromes. So how do we eff effectively treat acute pain? Well, to do this, we need to assess very quickly when patients present with acute venoocclusive crises, and we need to start narcotic pain medicine very quickly. We need to find the effective dose that controls the pain to get pain to a reasonable level, less than uh, two, out of, uh, two to four out of 10. And then we should supplement that so IV narcotic med medication is really the mainstay for acute pain. Um, in fact, it's, it's beneficial to consider patient-controlled analgesia. Now, we also can supplement that with Tylenol and NSAIDs. So Tylenol and NSAIDs are not sufficient in and of themselves, but they are effective supplements. So again, the mainstay is an IV narcotic that is supplemented by Tylenol and NSAIDs. Okay, and then Controlling chronic pain is very, very important if it begins. Now the mainstay for controlling chronic pain is the use of NSAIDs. And so this is sort of step one. And if the NSAIDs are not enough, then to consider adding long-acting narcotics, both long-acting and short-acting or breakthrough, plus a breakthrough agent. Okay, so again, just to review the management, uh, treatment and management of sickle cell disease, there's really one option for cure, and that's hematopoietic stem cell transplant. And again, it's, it's limited to people that have a uh, matched sibling donor that does not have sickle cell disease, and it also has a high rate of complications and a high rate of a significant rate of mortality. So it's something to consider if the donor is available. Then for those of, for those people who cannot get cure um, have cure as an option, then they need management. And again, preventing venoocclusive disease is one aspect of management. The mainstay for this is hydroxyurea and for some patients um, chronic transfusions may be helpful. The next aspect of management that's important to consider is preventing infection. Um, and and for children less than five years old, penicillin uh, prophylaxis is critical. And also for all patients, make sure that their vaccination schedules are up to date and they're receiving a pneumococcal vaccination and their yearly flu vaccines. Um, then the third element of management is the treatment of, of hem the hemolytic anemia that we see in sickle cell disease. Um, iron is generally not helpful and in patients with iron overload it may be actually detrimental. So the mainstay of treatment here is folate supplementation. Then the next element that we should consider is stroke prevention, and that's both primary and secondary pro stroke prevention. So patients that have had strokes in the past or patients that have abnormalities on transcranial Doppler, um, they should receive antiplatelet agents. And so one, they should receive antiplatelet agents, and number two, they should receive chronic transfusions every six to eight weeks. And then the last element of management of sickle cell disease that I want to point out is that it's very important to control pain. Acute pain control is, is critical because if you don't control acute pain well, um, it increases the chance of developing chronic pain syndromes in patients with sickle cell disease. So it's important to begin narcotic um, narcotics, IV narcotics in particular very quickly and to titrate them until we have pain well controlled and to only and to supplement 
the narcotics with uh, Tylenol and NSAIDs. And then patients that do develop chronic pain, it's important to start NSAIDs um, quickly and to consider supplementing with, uh, with long-acting narcotics if the NSAIDs are not sufficient. Okay, so I hope this was helpful to you, and um, please uh, look at my other videos look, talk, discussing sickle cell disease. I hope to see you there.